Gweithion, friends, diolch yn fawr iawn am y croeso cynnes. Mae hi'n hyfryd bod yma, hyfryd bod yn ôl yma. Feng mlynedd yn ôl o'n i ar yr un llwyfan yma yn Aberystwyth yn anerch cynhadledd y blaid am y tro cyntaf erioed yn fian ar ôl cael yn ethol. O'n i wedi bod i lawer o gynhadleddau'r blaid fel gahebydd newyddion cyn hynny felly dodd bod yno ddim yn ddieth cweit ond dwi yn cofio y wefr go iawn o fod yma fel rhan o deulu y blaid. Mi oedd o'n rhyw deimlad o fod adre. Ol heddiw, dwi'n i theimlo hi'n anrhydedd go iawn i gael bod yma yn sefyll o'ch blaen â chi am y tro cyntaf fel arweinydd. Wrth, wrth gwarfod cymaint ohonach chi, wrth gwarfod canghenna, cynghorwyr a chefnogwyr ar yngwybdaeth o gwmpas Cymru dros y misoedd dwetha, dwi wedi gweld y blaid ar i gora, y gefnogaeth, yr anogaeth, y brwdfrydedd, y cydweithio, o'r holl nodweddion na amblaid Cymru oedd yn nghyffroi i wrth i mi ystyried troi yn enw ymlaen am yr arweinyddiaeth. O edrych yn ôl ar y cyfnod hwnnw mis, mae hefyd yn gwybod bod rhai wedi bod yn awyddus i weld gornest. Mi allwch chi edrych arni hi y ddwy ffordd. Ac fel gwerin ieithwr, dwi na ddim yn ffan mawr o goroni chwaith. Ond a bod yn ddifrifol, dwi'n gobeithio y mod i wedi ac y byddai yn parhau i ennyn eich ymddiriedaeth chi. Arwain drwy sicrhau yn bod ni yn cydweithio ydy'r egwyddor pwysig i fi. Mae'r gwyntoedd gwleidyddol y tu allan yn gallu bod yn dymhestlog iawn. Ond efo'n gilydd, mae wynebu stormydd ac efo'n gilydd, mae sicrhau yn bod ni'n barod i hwylio yn gyflym ac yn syth pan mae'r gwyntoedd yn rhai teg, a dwi yn addo rhoi popeth sydd geni. Er mwyn mynd â phlaid Cymru i'r cam nesaf a symud Cymru tuag at ddyfodol gwell. <laughs> Friends, as I embark on this exciting journey with you, I want to thank Adam on behalf of all of us for his lasting contribution to the party as leader. Adam can't be with us today. He's been representing the Senate and Wales at a conference in Africa. His work there embodies who Adam is as a politician, passionate and principled. His drive in co-authoring the cooperation agreement has led to the implementation of applied policy in key areas. Not sure if you're able to keep up with the conference from where you are, Adam, but if you are, I hope you get a real sense of the appreciation for the work that you did for Pride and for Wales. A contribution which continues, of course. Aaron Trani Gid, Diochiti, Adam. Dwidi Dusky and Gyflym nad ydy arwain plaid yn swydd hawdd, ac mae'n aheria go iawn wedyn wynebu ni dros y flwyddyn ddwetha. Yn sgil cyhoeddi, adroddiad prosiect pawb, dan ni wedi gorfod wynebu rhai realities angyffordus yn do. Mae nhw'n betha yma llawer o bleidiau a sefydliadau eraill wedi wynebu, ond dyma yn tro ni i ddweud do mi ath na rhywbeth o'i le. Dylen mi ddylen ni fod wedi adnabod hynny ynghynt, ac ydan mi ydan ni'n benderfynol o wella petha. Ta di'n diwylliant ni ddim wedi bod beddol efo yn gwbl a gored a chynhwyso rhywbeth mor bwysig i fi, bod yn blaid groesawgar. Ta di'n prosesa ni ddim bob amser wedi cael ei cynnal mor dda ag y dylen o fod yn gadarn, yn drefnus ac yn drylloi yw. Ond heb orffwys ar yn rhwyfa am eiliad, mae'n a le gwirioneddol dwi'n meddwl i fod yn obeithiol. Oherwydd bod y blaid yma yn gwbl o ddifri am ddod drwy hyn ac am fod pethau ar waith yn barod. Dwi'n ddiolch gari Neris Evans, wrth gwrs, am y gwaith wnaeth hi yn llunio ar adroddiad. Ond dwi'n ddiolch gari wedyn i bawb prynau drwy y pwyllgor gwaith, y staff, drwy'r blaid wirfoddol ac ymhlith elodau etholedig am i gwaith caled yn gweithredu ar ac yn gwireddu yr argymhellion. Mi ddeud eisiau hyn wrth ddod yn arweinydd ac mi nai ail adrodd o heddiw. Dwi'n gwbl benderfynol o arwain mudiad sydd yn deg, yn gynhwysol a sy'n dangos parch at bawb yn gwbl ddieithriad. Dyna ydy plaid Cymru i mi, dyna'r blaid dan i gyd am iddi fod. Efo i gynlynedd o brofiad fel newyddydurwr, mae'n 
deg deud bod straeon yn bwysig i fi, ac mae datblygu yn stori ni fel cenedl yn golygu popeth i mi. We're all writing the story of Wales. We in, in this party, yes, but I mean all of us in Wales. In my lifetime, it's been a story of so many twists and turns. As a journalist, I reported on many of them. But let's retrace some of those chapters. In 1979, many thought we had lost it all, but the hope was kept alive. Then in 1997, well, Wales had it all to win, and we did win the referendum, but then we had to win Wales. In 1999, the hope boiled over joyfully. I was at the Morva Stadium uh, for Stereophonics and Margam Park for Catatonia in that summer of Cymru. Good mornings for Wales and good afternoons and good evenings that this young 20-something young man uh, could barely contain himself about. But as we reflect on what the birth of a new democracy for Wales helped us achieve, we reflect also on the missed uh, opportunities too, things we could have done. So as we look forward to the next quarter of a century and beyond, we must learn from the last. In the one Wales years, there was a glimpse of what could be done. But for us as a party whose central mission is about backing Wales's potential, we believe in our ability to prosper as an independent nation after all. The years of labor managerialism, of self-imposed limits on what Wales can be have been frustrating. Labour Party still too wedded to Westminster, even in the dark days of this Conservative government's cronyism and cruelty, and a party too resistant to new ways of thinking. We need to ride, and we needed to ride back then, the rising tide of Cymru 1999. Yes, we believed, and we still believe, that devolution was the right vessel for change, and that it's part of our journey towards independence. But in our next chapters as a nation, we have to chart a new course. It's quite apt that we highlight the ebbs and flows of devolution here in Aberystwyth at the University by the Sea, a colleague ger a chi. Speaking of ebbs and flows, you may have noticed there was a full moon uh, last week. And uh, no, I didn't need to consult a lunar calendar to know that. I just looked at Andrew R.T. Davis's Twitter feed. <laughs> but but to, be, to be serious, just, just as the tide comes and goes, and as night follows day, there are things which have felt all too inevitable about life in Wales. Gwimon o ddynion heb ddal tro'r trai. That was the great poet Gerard Lloyd Owen's stinging criticism of those who, like seaweed, float aimlessly with little direction, allowing themselves to be overtaken by the passing of time and events. We can't afford to have governments like that, and it's not inevitable. Having won a parliament of our own, it can't be said, can it, that 24 years of Labour-led rule have met the aspirations of 1999. In 2010, the rate of preventable deaths among men in our most deprived areas was 566 per 100,000. A decade later, that figure had increased to 582. Between 1999 and 2020, Wales saw the fourth lowest percentage increase in primary income per head out of all UK nations and English regions. In January 2010, 1,300 people were waiting more than 14 weeks for hospital diagnostic and therapy services. A decade later, in January 2020, and this is before uh, the pandemic struck, that figure was up 60%. We've achieved some great things through the current cooperation agreement, for example, and I'm proud of the way Senate members across party lines have come together on innovative pieces of legislation. But those statistics tell a grim tale, and it's not the kind of tale we want to tell our children and their children another 25 years from now. We refuse to accept that this is our lot, and above all, we refuse to let others write the next chapter for us. So what of the society we'll choose to build together? How do we make sure that the opening paragraphs of that new chapter captivate, invigorate, and inspire? It's not enough to criticize, to just dissect a record or dismiss a policy. There is no hope without a vision. So I want to set out mine. I was born in Tontaic, 
near Pontypridd, raised in Meirionydd, and then in this morn I studied, then we started our family in Cardiff, and now we live on and I represent my home island, and I'm determined that our nation has to be viewed as one. That is one key belief that guides my vision. Urban or rural, north or south, they're not divisions, they're just different tones of one nation. Not well-speaking or non-well-speaking, just people, stakeholders in our nation's future. And let me address that issue directly. We know the charge sometimes leveled against us. Plaid is for Welsh speakers. Well, I want to make it as clear as I possibly can. We are for everyone equally. Plaid Cymru speaks your language, whatever that language is. We speak your language when it comes to seeking fairness for Wales. We speak your language when it comes to showing real ambition for Wales. To me, this is a country at its best when our communities are bound by a sense of belonging, whether its residents were born here or moved here last week. This country belongs to us all, and this party takes pride in trying to do our best to speak up for all of Wales equally. So in that united Wales, I want our children to have the basic human rights of equal opportunity with the eradication of child poverty, a central goal in our mission and with a determination to let our young people reach their potential, whether born in Bangor or Bridgend and educated in well-resourced schools where teachers are valued through apprenticeships, through supporting our universities here and through innovative measures to attract graduates back home I want our school leavers to be excited about forging careers here in Wales. I want Plaid to be the ones helping business flourish, especially the small and medium-sized businesses that are so important to us in Wales. I want us to innovate as a green nation, proud to take our environmental responsibilities seriously and creating thousands of jobs in the process. I'm serious about making us a healthier nation with a real revolution in preventative healthcare, improving quality of life, whilst easing the crisis facing our NHS, promoting physical and mental health, whether it's through better housing, better diets, or promotion of sport or physical activity in school and in all aspects of our lives. And I want to make sure that we take care of the generation who took care of us, investing in a truly integrated national health and care service which allows our parents to grow old with dignity. This is the Wales we can be. <laughs> and the cornerstone of that vision, what makes Plaid Cymru truly stand out is our belief that the ultimate way to deliver it is by taking the levers of change into our own hands. Westminster governments, red and blue, have tried and failed, and I tell you, they'll never try hard enough for Wales. Look around you. Do you think this is the best things can get? No, it isn't, and that's why we're determined to build a new Wales. Gynhadledd yn y nengwynedd yn y Senedd. Dwi wedi bod yn ddigon ffodus i dreilio cyfnodau fel gwynedol cysgodol dros yr economi a dros iechyd a gofal. Mae rhain yn feysydd dwi'n angerddol dros dyn nhw. Yn gwasanaeth iechyd, yn iechyd ni i gyd a iechyd ein economi, cyflwr ein cenedl ni. Ers i mi gael yn ethol, dwi wedi cyfarfod gymaint o bobl, meddygon a gofalwyr, prentisiaid, nyrsys, myfyrwyr, Entrepreneuriaid, pob un efo stori werthfawr i wahadrodd, pob sgwrs yn sbardino syniadau newydd am sydd i wneud, be dan i yma i wneud, gwella bywydau pobl Cymru, achos mae'n rhaid gwella, a hynny ar y fris. Y math o fris sydd ddim fel tai o'n cael ei weld gan y llywodraeth lafur bresennol, ac mae yna ganlyniadau i hynny. Canlyniadau fel y diriwiad dan ni wedi weld yn yr NHS am bron i chwarter Canrif. Mae'n sefyllfa argyfyngus. A drwchwch yn agosach a dach chi'n gweld argyfynga o fewn argyfwng. Within the crisis facing our NHS, there's no greater heartache than hearing the word cancer. 
Every day, 55 people are diagnosed with cancer in Wales, with that number projected to rise by more than a quarter to around 25,000 new cases a year in 2040. But as the challenge becomes greater, our capacity to face it is diminishing. It's something we have to address. There's no silver bullet, it's complex, but there are things that could be done right now to help save lives. Today, I want to tell you about Plaid Cymru's cancer contract. The steps we say Welsh Government can take to help tackle a crisis which has touched all our lives in some way. We know that the sheer number of people waiting to be seen by a specialist means that many simply fall down the priority list. That's why I want to see no downgrading of urgent suspected cancer referrals, meaning fewer cases would be missed. We must improve how we screen for cancer. Lowering the sensitivity threshold for bowel cancer screening, as they've done in Scotland and England. We were promised that, but the Labour government has so far failed to deliver. On lung cancer, it's 12 months now since Welsh government accepted the UK Screening Committee's recommendation on targeted lung cancer screening. At the end of July this year, Labour Health Minister Elinard Morgan issued a statement saying that the government was still considering how this could be delivered in Wales. You know, when... Almost half of people with lung cancer are diagnosed at a late stage when the cancer has already spread. Surely there's no more time for considering. And these measures must be applied equally throughout Wales. We must end the current postcode lottery. I want to see greater cooperation between health boards, sharing capacity where that helps provide quicker diagnostics, for example. Plaid Cymru also wants to place a greater focus on prehabilitation, getting people ready for cancer treatment to help recovery afterwards. And of course, none of this is possible without a well-resourced workforce. By resolving the three R's of recruitment, retention and proper remuneration, we can grow the health workforce of the future and not have to resort to squandering tens of millions of pounds each year on agency staff, leaking money out of the NHS into the private sector. And the workforce problem in cancer is acute. Within the next four years, Wales is projected to have a 41% shortfall in oncology staff, the highest by far of all UK nations. A new workforce strategy from Plaid Cymru would see a new approach to keeping the staff we have and to training those we'll need in 20 years. We need to invest in the workforce so we can attract the brightest and best and so we can develop our health services. And today I can announce that we're commissioning an expert policy development programme to examine the delivery of healthcare in Wales. I've long made the case that patients in the north of our country in particular are being failed, not by the committed and compassionate frontline staff, but by the inability of successive Labour health ministers to address the deficiencies of the failing Betsy Cadwallader Health Board. So this work will not only look at creating a sustainable structure for the future of health boards in Wales as a whole, but specifically at remodelling health provision in the north, where they say enough is enough, both as patients and staff. Friends, we, we can't just manage ill health in Wales. We must confront it head on. Bevan's dream is floundering on Labour's watch. But working with our health spokesman, Mabon Ap Gwynfor, we can show what's needed to put the NHS back on a sustainable footing, free at the point of need, always there when you need it most. Our work in leading innovative policy development will touch on all aspects of life in Wales. Tackling inequalities, raising standards in education, investing in language and culture, supporting farming and rural Wales, building a transport system that works, and of course, tackling the economic challenges that hold us back. The long shadow of deindustrialization has left Wales with stubbornly low wages, meagre productivity levels, and the shortage of high-skilled, well-paid jobs. A shadow cast even longer by the current government's apparent willingness to just sit back and wait for the next wave of bad news to hit. Wales needs a government on the front foot and a government which brings a wholly new approach to economic development. Small and medium-sized businesses need to know that political leaders in Wales are on their side and that's what they'll get in Plaid Cymru, not least through a new economic plan led by my colleague Luke Fletcher.
In 2022, Wales was ranked last of the UK nations in terms of the profitability of its small and medium-sized enterprises. A poor exporting record is just one symptom of that. Last year, just 14% of SMEs here sold their goods or services outside the UK. The lowest export intensity of the entire UK SME sector. So whilst helping businesses grow at home, Let's link up the Welsh economy to the world. And yes, we continue to champion a new Wales Development Agency for the 21st century, attracting investment, boosting trade, promoting enterprise, working across the UK and globally, growing exports, creating new Welsh supply chains, boosting our procurement levels in the process. And you know, my views on how we need to support business mirror in many ways my overall ambition for Wales. As Westminster retreats, well, let's make sure Wales reaches out. This is my vision for independence. A nation growing in prosperity and more able to ensure the well-being of its citizens at home, and at the same time, a nation that asserts its place in the world. Confident, ambitious, collaborative, and internationalist. And crucially, as we build the nation, the economy we develop must be strong, sustainable, and socially just. And all of this needs reform. We must reform to build. By reforming the structures and systems that sustain us, that educate our children, and care for our parents, we can begin building the strongest foundations possible for an independent Wales. So as our democracy changes in 2026, so too must the government of the day, because a bigger Senedd demands bigger ideas and bigger ambitions if we are to realise the full potential of having a parliament of our own. In the run-up to that Welsh general election, my colleagues in the Senate that I'm so proud to work alongside will set out their vision for a wide-ranging reforming agenda. As the world moves apace, so must Wales. But first, a Westminster election looms. And with that on the horizon, it's worth taking a moment just to reflect on the true value of having applied Cymru MP. My early years in political journalism were spent among those grand corridors of power in Westminster, meant to impress, but with a power to oppress. The architecture as intimidating uh, as it is, awe-inspiring. But friends, let me pay tribute to those Plaid Cymru representatives who've gone there and felt no fear, serving their constituents with real distinction, standing up for their communities and speaking up for Wales when others talk us down, they embody Plaid Cymru's values and our determination to seek the best for Wales. Diolchichi am bopeth. I mean, keeping up with the Tory chaos is no mean feat. <laughs> it uh, seems that whilst every cabinet member nearly is determined to spend at least 45 days as prime minister, uh, Grant Sharps is determined to spend at least a few weeks in every post in cabinet. <laughs> so as the powers that be seek to diminish our nation's voice even further, cutting the number of Welsh MPs from 40 to 32, let's resolve to do what it takes engaging with people in all parts of the country on our positive vision for our communities so we can send the strongest possible team of Plaid Cymru MPs to Westminster. And wasn't it wonderful to listen to Llinos Medi earlier, who I know would be such a brilliant MP for an morning. Faced with a UK Tory government which governs with contempt and with Labour still seemingly uninterested in showing real commitment to delivering for Wales, the stakes are, are pretty high. Speaking up for fairness, for ambition, and speaking up for Wales always becomes our moral obligation. We have to speak out on the fact that a third of our children live in poverty, that we have the longest waiting times in history a meaningless cancer guarantee, worst and worsening unemployment rates, England's railways improved at the expense of our own, COVID corruption, smoggy skies and sewage seas, our water taken, our rivers polluted, nearly half of all wealth in the hands of 10%. 
Brexit-inspired rule Britannia nostalgia, small boats and even smaller mines, mortgages rising, real terms wages falling, hope a scarce commodity. That is the broken society the Westminster parties built together. It is change that we in Plaid Cymru choose. So friends, as the blue wall comes crumbling down and with the well of clear red water running dry, this is our moment to fight for change, to inspire, to convince. And we have a good story to tell. When others talk of breaking the class ceiling but vote to shatter the life chances of the disadvantaged, remember that in the best traditions of this party, it is us who pushed for real change. Bold strides to address the housing crisis, giving more young people a chance to live where they grew up. Warm, nutritious school meals for everyone that needs them. No more children going hungry as they learn. A national energy company, Ani Cymru, empowering communities to be a part of Wales's green energy revolution. Groundbreaking mental health hubs, a step change in the provision of Welsh language education, normalising the language and creating confident speakers and a fit for purpose Senedd. That is the Wales we are building right now, and that is the change that we choose. And those, those recent achievements have been from opposition through the cooperation agreement. Just imagine if we were in government. When the party of Wales is at the heart of Wales' decision-making, communities are better off. But conference, there is so much more to do. And we must achieve it through the shared values, shared vision, and shared hopes for our nation's future that drive us, each and every one of us, every day. We'll have to work harder than ever and smarter than ever to compete with the Tories and Labour one with their millionaires and moguls on their side, the other with the might of the unions. Unions many of us are members of, and unions, no doubt, who are reflecting on their loyalty. Then we must learn to do things differently. Where we can't outspend them, we must outsmart them. When they patronize with empty promises and endless U-turns, we must prove that not all political parties are the same. When they give up on supporting the most vulnerable in society, we will double down. And when red and blue align on refusing to rejoin the single market, on denying Wales funding from HS2, on attacking workers' rights through draconian legislation, we will guard the clear green water between their politics and ours. And on HS2, let me just say that laid bare this week was not only the shambles that is the Conservative Party, it's not so much that they couldn't or could organise something in a brewery, it turned out that their journey to the brewery has been stopped halfway there. <laughs> we know the Conservatives care little about Wales, but with the sheer injustice of, it, of HS2 brought into clearer focus than ever this week, the Labour Welsh First Minister decided to sympathise with his party leader Keir Starmer rather than with the people of Wales, telling me in the Senate that his leader would have many priorities to consider if he becomes Prime Minister and that it's entirely understandable that he can't commit to paying Wales what we're owed. This is the First Minister of Wales. The injustice is clear as daylight and Wales deserves better than Tory insults and Labour dithering. And, and as, as for the crumbs offered instead, North Wales electrification, we won't be conned. Of course I support electrification, I always have. But that's only a fraction of what we're owed. And experience tells us not to trust them to deliver even that. We'll hold them to account until they do, and we'll keep standing up for our communities. When people ask us why we believe in independence, it's because we know we can do better than this. On our journey towards that goal, we must convince the curious and as yet unconvinced that this really is a destination for both heart and mind, a place where aspiration is met with a dedication and determination to improve the lives of the people of Wales. And whilst independence 
isn't an issue for one party to own. It's an issue for all of us in Wales. It is an issue on which we must be leaders, bringing others with us, building a broad coalition. The clue's in our name, Plaid Cymru, the party of Wales. Wherever you live and whatever your background, come with us. It's about wanting what's best for the place we all call home. Conference, I'm reminded of Gwynvor's words when he wrote of fighting for Wales. National freedom, he said, is the condition of Welsh national survival. If we don't put an end to our servitude, our servitude will put an end to us. That's why we must fight for Wales. Giving up or giving in is not an option. Just look at the alternative. A billion pounds taken out of the Welsh economy due to welfare cuts. Clinging on to control of the Crown Estates whilst Welsh citizens pay some of the highest energy bills in the UK. The great Brexit betrayal. No share of the promised £350 million a week for the NHS. No pound-for-pound pound support for Welsh farmers and a £772 million hole in the funding which supported some of our most deprived communities. And a Home Secretary who seems to have struck her own personal post-Brexit UK-US trade deal. What's she importing? Her own brand of tin pot Trumpism. Whilst it takes Braverman to turn her back on people fleeing some of the most desperate places on earth, it takes a far braver man or woman to embrace those in need with the decency and compassion so lacking in this Conservative cabinet. <laughs> if ever, if ever there was a reminder that sometimes we must do the right thing and not the easy thing, it is the heartbreaking images of children on dangerously crowded boats clinging onto their parents as they cling on to life itself, because it is this moral austerity that we deplore. It is why we fight every day to be the antidote to Tory antipathy towards Wales, and every day we're reminded at the same time that Keir Starmer's Labour Party will never make fair play for Wales a real priority. Wales faces a choice. As we ask ourselves, who is fighting for Wales on the side of young and old, urban and rural communities alike? Who are the game changers, the nation builders, reformers and innovators? Who will guide Wales when others turn a blind eye? Who will fight for fair treatment for Wales? We will, Plaid Cymru will be the ones fighting for a better future for you and your family, your community and your country. For fairness, for ambition, for Wales. Diolch am fawr